Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionist where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our physiology playlist. In previous videos, we started talking about GI physiology. We talked about the slow wave potentials, the spike potentials, tonic contractions, the calcium calmodulin system. Today, let's dig deeper into the enteric nervous system, which is made of the myenteric plexus for motility and the submucosal plexus for secretions. On top of that, you can have the parasympathetic, which stimulates the enteric, or the sympathetic, which inhibits the enteric. Now, let's get started. No pain, no gain, no digestion, no absorption. If you cannot digest the food that you eat, you're not going to able to absorb it, which means it's pointless to eat. But that's not normal. Here is what's normal. You digest your food, which means you break it down from macro to micro molecules. These micro molecules are small enough to be absorbed into the bloodstream, usually in the vicinity of the portal venous system. Then send those micro molecules to the liver for metabolism. And before you know it, you have doozy nutrients that you can give to all of your body via arterial blood supply. Each one of your cells needs oxygen and nutrients for cellular metabolism. But in order for you to absorb, you need first to digest. And in order for you to digest, you need to move and to secrete. Motility and secretion of the gut. And in order for you to have some motility and secretions, you need muscles. Thank you so much, mesoderm. And you need nervous system. Thank you so much, ectoderm. And also you need the epithelium of your gut. Thank you, endoderm. What kind of muscle exists in your gut? Smooth muscles. Non-striated involuntary. Non-striated, non-branching, involuntary, uninucleated, it's autonomic, which means automatic, which means you cannot control it. Your gut has its own autonomy, it's known as the enteric nervous system. Instead of troponin, your gut has calmodulin instead. Do they have gap junctions or nexus? Yes, they do. That's why they can contract as one unit called syncytium. What's the name of the pacemaker of your heart? Sinoatrial node. What's the name of the pacemaker of your gut? Enteric nervous system via the interstitial cells of Cajal. In order for you to excite the heart or the smooth muscles of your gut, you need calcium influx. What's the autonomic nervous system? It's the nervous system that you cannot control. It's not under your conscious control. It's automatic. It's involuntary. Some students think that autonomic nervous system is sympathetic and parasympathetic only. Wrong. It's sympathetic and parasympathetic and enteric nervous system, which is subdivided into the myenteric plexus for motility and the submucosal plexus for secretions. Superimposed on the enteric nervous system is sympathetic or parasympathetic. As you recall, Sympathetic is fight-flight, parasympathetic is rest and digest. If I am in fight-flight mode, running from a tiger, running for my life, do you think I have time to digest and absorb? Shut up, there is no time for this nonsense. So the sympathetic will tell the enteric nervous system to decrease motility and secretion of the gut. Conversely, if I am in the parasympathetic land, rest and digest, it's time for me to actually digest and absorb. So the parasympathetic fibers will tell the enteric nervous system to boost motility and secretions. There is the enteric nervous system, sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers in your GI tract. That's why we can measure the electricity via electrointestinogram. Your gut has slow wave potentials and spike potentials, and we have talked about this in previous videos, so please pause and review. Here are the slow waves humming in the background, on top of which we lay the spike potentials, which are true action potentials, causing true contractions of the smooth muscles of your gut. Where are the smooth muscles of my gut? Well, let's talk about that. There are four layers in the gut wall, mucosa, submucosa, musculosa, serosa. The mucosa has the epithelium and basement membrane and a very thin layer of muscles known as the muscularis mucosa or musculosa interna 
or mucosal muscles. But no one cares about this layer of muscle. After this, we have connective tissue in the submucosa, full of glands, by the way, for secretion. And then we have the muscle layer that we actually do care about, which is the musculosa, also known as muscularis externa which is arranged in two beautiful layers, inner circular muscle layer and outer longitudinal muscle layer. After this, you have the serosa or adventitia, another layer of connective tissue. When the gut is covered by peritoneum, we call it serosa. When it's not, we call it adventitia. Put differently, it is always adventitia, okay? Sometimes it is serosa if it is covered by peritoneum. In other words, serosa is a subset of adventitia. In other words, adventitia could be non-serosa if it's not covered by peritoneum or serosa if it is covered by peritoneum. Here is my enteric nervous system, automatic. The gut alone, without help from outside nerves, can contract and secrete without help from the outsiders because the enteric nervous system has the myenteric or orbis plexus for motility and submucosal or Meissner plexus for secretions. So even if you cut the surrounding nerve fibers, the gut on its own can contract and secrete. What's the purpose of the parasympathetic then? It boosts the enteric nervous system, increasing motility and secretions. What's the function of the sympathetic then? To inhibit the enteric nervous system, which decreases motility and secretions. Okay, metacosis, where do I find the submucosal plexus? The submucosal plexus is in the submucosa and it's for secretions. Submucosal submucosa secretions. How about the myenteric plexus? The myenteric plexus is in the musculosa for motility. Myenteric musculosa motility. Where do I find it? Between the inner circular and the outer longitudinal smooth muscle layers inside the musculosa, i.e. inside the muscularis externa. Here is the lovely submucosal plexus or Meissner plexus for secretions. Where do I find it? In the submucosa. How about this? This is my myenteric plexus for motility. Where do I find it? In the musculosa or muscularis externa. What's the purpose of the parasympathetic? To stimulate secretion and motility. How about sympathetic? It inhibits motility and secretion. So, the gut has two main functions, to move and to secrete. Mechanical functions, chemical functions. Mechanical digestion, chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion, motility, which means peristalsis and mixing movements. The hero is the myenteric plexus or Orbach's plexus, which is part of the enteric nervous system. Where do I find it? In the musculosa between the inner circular and outer longitudinal layers. How about the chemical functions, the C with the S? Chemical functions mean secretions of what? Of enzymes and hormones. They will help you digest and absorb your food. Where do I find this? Submucosal plexus or Meissner plexus? It's in the submucosa. Is it only for secretions? No, not only does it secrete, it also helps regulate and control your local blood flow to the gut and contraction of the muscularis mucosa, the very thin layers of muscles that exist in the mucosa, maybe tiny fibers in the submucosa, which will help give the gut its famous infoldings. Remember that the sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, is thoracolumbar t1 t2 t3 t4 t6 7 8 9 10 until t12 plus lumbar 1 and lumbar 2 some textbooks will add lumbar 3. out of all of this which one is gonna go to my abdomen and pelvis everything except t1 through t4 the first four will go to head neck thorax the remaining ones from t5 until l2 will go to my abdomen and pelvis if i'm going to your gut i will relay in the prevertebral or collateral ganglia sometimes called aortic ganglia such as celiac ganglia superior mesenteric ganglia inferior mesenteric ganglia which follow their blood supply until they reach the gut organs as you recall sympathetic nerve endings release norepinephrine next parasympathetic remember craniosacral rest digest 
Which cranial? Well, the one that goes to your gut is the vagus nerve, which is cranial nerve number 10, which supplies almost all of your elementary canal, with the exception of the uppermost end and the lowermost end. The uppermost end will be supplied by cranial nerves 7 and 9. I'm talking about your tongue. And the lowermost end, which is the distal half of the colon, as well as rectum and anal canal above the pectinate line, will be supplied by the pelvic nerves or pelvic splanchnic nerves, which came from sacral to three and four segments. So parasympathetic nervous system versus sympathetic nervous system to the gut. Parasympathetic craniosacral. What do you mean by cranio? Vagus nerve. What do you mean by sacral? Pelvic nerve, S234. How about the sympathetic? From the fifth thoracic until the second lumbar, forming the greater splanchnic nerve for the abdomen and the lesser splanchnic nerve for the pelvis. So please pay attention. Greater splanchnic nerve is sympathetic. Lesser splanchnic nerve is sympathetic. Pelvic splanchnic nerve is parasympathetic. Functions. Parasympathetic nervous system supplies the smooth muscles of your gut wall to increase motility and secretions. Sympathetic, however, supplies smooth muscles and the blood vessels. So not just the wall of your gut, the wall of the blood vessels as well. Parasympathetic fibers rarely supply blood vessels. Parasympathetic will boost motility and secretions by stimulating the enteric nervous system. But sympathetic, when I'm running from a tiger, there is no time for this nonsense, so I'll decrease motility and secretions, and I will inhibit the enteric nervous system. By the way, what does the word entero mean? It means intestines. Some medicosis pearls for the pros. In order for you to secrete, you better vasodilate first. I don't get it. Look, here is the cell. Okay. This cell wants to secrete something. Okay. You need to store those secretions inside lovely secretory granules or secretory vesicles. Okay. Where do you think we got those secretions from? We made them. But where did you get the raw materials from? Answer, from the blood. That's why if you want me to secrete more, you need to give me more blood. And to give me more blood, you need to vasodilate. Because in the next video, we'll talk about some local substances that dilate vessels. They will help increase secretions of the gut. Conversely, look at the doofus, sympathetic with its norepinephrine. They vasoconstrict vessels, which decreases gut secretions. Oh, that makes sense, because there is not enough raw materials coming, I will not be able to secrete. Brilliant. Add to that that the sympathetic also inhibits the enteric nervous system, and you'll find the sympathetic can decrease secretions big time. However, we gotta be careful when we talk about sympathetic and secretions, because sympathetic alone can increase secretions slightly. But these are different types of secretions, by the way, such as the very thick saliva that you secrete when you're running from a tiger. This is supposed to help you feel dry and thirsty so that you can drink, so that you can replenish yourself and survive. But these are not the saliva intended for digestion. They are just intended to make you thirsty. What does parasympathetic do? It boosts secretions big time. These are intended for digestion and absorption. If parasympathetic is stimulated and you add a sympathetic to it, guess what? There is no surprise here. It will inhibit secretions due to vasoconstriction. One more tip, norepinephrine. What does it do to the musculose? Well, it's part of sympathetic, so it decreases motility and secretion, all right? So when it comes to the big muscle layer in the musculosa, i.e. muscularis externa, norepinephrine will inhibit it. No one is shocked here. But here's the shocking part. Norepinephrine can actually boost the muscularis mucosa, which is the thin layer of muscles in the mucosa, which no one cares about, also known as muscularis interna or mucosal muscle. In the next video, I'll tell you about the two famous types of gastrointestinal movements, which are the propulsive movements, peristalsis, and the mixing movements. And we'll have some very cool physics concepts in the next video. If you like this video, check out my renal physiology course on my website, medicosisperfectgenetics.com. 
I also have a surgery high yields course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.